Okay, folks, excuse the way I look, but this is another one of my ministries with the Unity Church of Broxton, Georgia, a.k.a. the YouTube Church of Broxton, Georgia. I am the minister of this church, and I want to say excuse the way I look, but being my life is like it is now, and the good Lord knows, and I don't have to tell everybody my story, because I feel like in the end it'll come out. Keep looking on Isaac Bringman 81 for updates, and once every so often I'll try to do like religious sermons, which is basically, okay, I'll give you an example. Either on Sundays or Mondays I'll do recordings of sermons, and then I'll turn around and when I get time I'll upload them to the internet, but I'll only do it when I can. But the point is, is I want to talk to y'all right now and tell y'all that I want y'all to, this is uh, Monday, September the 17th, 2012. It's 11.05 a.m. and this is a good time to do this. Alright, but I'm going to do this for a little while and then I got to go and get ready to do something. Anyways, I want y'all to read, let's see, Second Timothy from 1 to 18. And then tell me, in, either with uh, leaving me a message on YouTube or, go, or either leaving me a message on IsaacBringman at gmail.com, what message you got out of reading that. Tell me what you did. And I advise you to try to read the Bible from cover to cover, but try that one. Second Timothy 1 to 18. Like, and I'm talking about not as in uh, chapters. I'm talking about like verses, you know, from 1 to 18. Like, like start, you know, when you read, for those that don't know about reading the Bible, you know when you open up the Bible and you see little letters and little numbers. Okay, the numbers in little have messages behind them. Okay, well, they're marked for, like, if you start from the first place, like, you start with the first chapter, so it would be the first chapter, verses 1 to 18, like that, on Second Timothy. Alright, now that I've said that, I'm going to go into my message. It seems to me that there are times in life when people just refuse to be honest with folks. They don't want to, and no, I'm not naked. You just see my naked shoulders is all it is. But no, I have clothes on. Because you know me, I'm try I would never let y'all see me naked if I'm doing anything on here, even with ministry. Because this is considered church, and I don't want nobody in the house of the Lord to say, well, he's on here naked. No. Anytime you've seen me, even if you liked it or not, I wasn't naked. But my story goes like this. You, you see people having problems in life, and they don't tell you what their problems are until you have to drag it out of them. And when they finally tell you what the story is, you say, well, why in the world didn't they just tell you? Well, a lot of them are scared to tell you their problems because they're afraid that old Satan will start flaring them problems up some more. And it ain't Satan doing that mess. It's basically, well, yeah, he started the problem, but it don't flare up just by the devil just because you say something about it. And it seems to me that there are people in this world that don't take things seriously as they should. I've learned there are people in this world that would go backwards, walking backwards in life, trying to get somewhere and don't pay attention to what's behind them, which the thing that's behind them should have been the thing, excuse me for a button, but the things behind them should be the thing that should be in front of them. Because if they turned around and went straight forward, they'd see the obstacles ahead. But they look, but they walk backwards and they run right into something they don't need to be involved in. So that's why they say if you walk backwards, do it for health reasons and don't do it just for a life reason. Because if you do it for a life reason, you're pretty much telling the world that you don't care about them. Hold on.
Let's see if I can prop this up right. Like you say to people, well, brother, what's wrong with you today? Why are you on a kick about this stuff? Well, I'm on a kick about it because I've been there before and I've seen the way people treat folks. They don't think about what they're saying or doing until it's too late. And we know people that do this and we just let it go on and on for years and years. Here we go. We can let it go on for years and years and don't say nothing about it. And we say, well, why does people do that and they don't talk about the problems that go on in this world? Hold on. There. Why do people go on and on like that and don't tell about the problems of the world that need to be confessed to the good Lord? Well, they're scared to say anything because they're afraid if they do, the good Lord might not bless them the way they want to be blessed. Or they won't get the kind of relief they need. But in my book, the story goes like this. You do what God says and He'll bless you. But if you don't do what God says, you get pain and torment. Now, do remember, if you ever see anybody on these videos that are actually singing, and they're singing in front of the camera just like I'm talking to you now, then that's people that I have finally talked into letting me record them so y'all could see them singing and talking. Like, like, there are people I know of right now that could get famous if they let me record them. But I haven't, if I ask them, then, then they say, yes, I'll do it. But until then, you may not see them. But anyway, now if you ever see me praying with my eyes open, don't think that you can't do that. There's, you can pray with your eyes open. You can pray with your eyes closed. You can pray all different ways. But I've learned in my lifetime that you have to do what God says if you don't want to go to hell. Too many people standing up for what they think is right and they find out they're standing up for what's wrong and then they end up in deep mess because they just don't care about the world they live in. They don't care about nobody but their own self and what they can get. They want greed. They want hunger. They hunger for money and they hunger for power. And you don't get that way if you don't you don't get that way if you love the Lord. Because the Lord says you don't go for greed if you go for Him. Sort of like saying if if the presidential election had the Lord in it, then if you vote Lord, you get a whole buttload of righteousness. But if you vote for devil, you get a whole buttload of pain. And I'd rather have that buttload of righteousness because the righteousness that you get from the good Lord is ten times better than any ten times worse you can get from the devil. It's better. I like it because I, I see, I've seen people in my lifetime go out in this world sinning and thinking it's fun to sin. Well to them it might be fun but to me it's a crying shame to know that this world lives that way. We don't need to live in a world where we can't even talk to nobody. We got to cry and weep and wail because we can't see a man getting saved because we don't understand that some people's salvation is depending on what we say and do and what we don't say and do on people. Understand me well folks if you don't get this straight in your life where are you coming from in this world? What are you doing in this world? You're not doing nothing if you can't wake up and say I'm sorry God for what I've done to you I need to make a change in this world. Well, of course you need to make a change, but the thing is, what change are you willing to make in order to get the world where you need it? If you can't change the world the right way, then you might as well say, I'm changing the world for the worse, and go on about yourself and do what the devil says, if you're not willing to do what God says. But if we had less devil worshippers and more God and Jesus worshippers, we'd probably have a better world. No, not probably. We would have a better world. But too many people too scared to say that they love God because they're afraid it's going to make them look bad because they've been known to be a professed devil worshiper and they are afraid if they change that they'll get killed. Well guess what? If you believe in God and take God seriously there's no chance that I can see of you getting killed by nobody and even if you did it's better to be killed for loving the Lord than it is to love the devil. And that is a dryer running because in this office we have dryers and washers to wash clothes with. Well, we believe that if you 
we believe that if you are in or dealing with the Lord and you're dealing with public relations and different other things that there are going to be times that you can't exactly go from one place to another you might get to work and you might find yourself dirty so then you turn around and you got a bathroom to take a shower in and a um, washer and dryer to wash your clothes in that's only for emergency cases like say if you had to go on a date with your wife or girlfriend and you're here and next thing you know you ain't got time to go home and change your clothes and all that you could wash your clothes here and you could dry them here and you could um, but this is for people that if you come to my office you understand that my office has a washer and dryer in it for um, reasons of well if you don't do that then let's just say it like this I have a washer and dryer in here because of the fact if I don't put one in then say if somebody came here and they said okay look I came here to work but yet I ain't got time to go home or I don't have time to go home and get a shower and put on some clean clothes before I have to go to do some kind of ministry work or go on a date with my wife or girlfriend or take my child to a party or something so may I wash some clothes here and then take a shower in the bathrooms see that's for that kind of stuff you know emergency cases where you ain't got time to go home and wash your clothes and and take a shower when you got to go somewhere important but now if it was washing your whole load of laundry I'd say go home and do that if you had time to take a shower at home I'd say go home and do that but if you ain't got time to wash a shirt and pants and underwear and socks to wear to a party like birthday party or or if not a birthday party then a uh, party to do with uh, the Lord or go to a movie with your wife or girlfriend or husband or boyfriend or take your kids somewhere then I'd say well if you ain't got time to wash your clothes at home and also ain't got time to uh, take a shower for that then I'd either let you go home early or either I would take and um, let you um, wash and dry your clothes here and being that I'm about to leave soon I have to use this facilities in order to get ready for me to go straight from my work to public relations okay so if I'd have had time to go straight home I would have went home I would have made sure I had clean clothes and I would have made sure that I had a shower a shave and all that and shave the stubble that I have I would do that but since I don't have time to do that then I could use the shower in my office and use a wash and dryer at my office see it's all in for emergency cases now if I had time to do all this at home I would do it but let me quit digressing I just didn't want y'all to wonder why did you hear a dryer noise in the background that was just my reasoning but anyways the point is is that you know we get to the point in our lives where we say well I want to learn to love the Lord but I'm just too scared to learn to love the Lord because I don't know what the world will do to me well it's not what the world will do to you if you don't learn to love the Lord it's what you will get from the Lord if you don't learn to love him he told you three or four maybe about a hundred or so times love me and I'll give you what you deserve love me and I will give you what you desire if you desire a heart full of love and we talking about Christian love godly love love from on high that would only be from the good Lord then yeah of course so you have to learn that when God says wake up folks we're in the days of trying to get people to go from good to better or from worse to good then we need to understand well Lord since you said that we need to ask him what does he want us to do in order to serve that purpose if his answer is you are children of my self which in the case of the Lord he would say you're children of me or children of myself and that I tell you that when I tell you what I want you to do for somebody do it don't hesitate if you don't do what the Lord tells you to do you're doomed 
to go straight to hell and you'll end up never knowing about it. Look at Paul and Silas. That jail cell. Well, you know what? The point of that story teaches us that, yeah, we may do the right thing all through our lives, or we may do the right thing once we get ourselves saved, and then turn right around and have people look straight at us and say, you're a saved man, ain't you? You say, yeah. Then they put you through all this torment because they don't want you to learn anything more than what you learned, or they don't want you to progress in your business of learning to love the Lord. But the bad part about all that is, is that if you love the Lord, truly love the Lord, love the Lord, I meant to say, then you're going to be stubborn and pick, you're going to be stubborn about it. You're going to tell the world that you love the Lord and that no matter what anybody says, there's no way that they can put you down or if they get you down to keep you down because you're for God and Jesus and there's no other way to go about it. But there's too many people in this world that say that God and Jesus is all a bunch of made up stuff that someone made up to get something out of other people. The only made up thing that there is about God and Jesus that is used by people to get what they want from others is when folks tell you that God said this and that and he didn't say it. Hold on here. Gotta fix this. Now, I've seen it before. I've seen it before where you have people talking to you about God and Jesus. Look, you dead in the eyeballs. And instead of saying, well, God said this and Jesus said that. That turn right around and tell you something to get you in trouble. Or try to get you in trouble. Hold on. Well, hold on. I'm trying to get this lighting right. And now you say, you say, well, Lord, you say, well, Lord, I thought that you were supposed to be for everybody. Well, the Lord is for everybody, but the point is, is that you can't sit there and expect the Lord to just bend over backwards because you want him to. You got to give him a reason to love you and a reason to keep on loving you. Which means he'll always love you no matter what you say or do. Okay, so you really, in a, another way of putting it, don't have to have any reasons for why the Lord should keep on loving you because he'll always love you no matter what you say or do. But you do have to have a reason to keep on loving him. Okay, you say, well, brother, didn't you just say that you have to have a, you have to give the Lord a reason to keep on loving you? Well, yes, but when you think about it in the grand scheme of things, the good Lord's always going to love you no matter what you say or do. So that's already done decided. Okay, but on the other hand,